Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. We're going to be kicking this video off with news for the RX 7000 series. Obviously, leaked benchmarks are starting to pop up online, given the fact that the cards release officially in just a few days' time. We have NVIDIA and the RTX 4070 specifications, which have popped up. And we also have the company even teasing us with the next-generation GeForce products. And finally... Intel have even given us some hints as to what its plans are for its journey into discrete gaming GPUs, as it seems that they are not one and done, but they have plans for the longer term, including what they think is the sweet spot for performance and power envelopes. And we're going to get right into this after the message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also of course sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So let's start things out with the RX 7000 series because, well, they do release in just a couple of days' time. And honestly, at this point, I don't think performance figures are going to surprise you too much. We have both Firestrike and Time Spy, which has leaked online. And I want to give credit to videocards.com, who have done a rather nice kind of smattering of GPUs as a comparison point between them. The RTX 4090 being the uh, flagship, of course, which they are comparing all of the other products against. Long story short here, in 3D Mark Time Spy with the Extreme preset, you'll notice that the uh, 4080 and 7900 XTX as well as XT essentially perform within the margin of error of one another but things do change a little bit at 1440p but meanwhile fire strike things are actually a little different so I'm going to round up and down the figures here for everyone's sanity, but there's roughly a 10% difference in performance between the 7900 XT and the XTX at the 4K results, and basically the same thing is mirrored in Extreme. Again, I've mentioned it's several videos at this point. I won't go over it too much because, again, I've said it so many times, but I've personally been hearing from multiple sources at this point that on average... The 4080 is beaten by the 7900 XTX by around 10%. Now, of course, average equals it depends upon the game, the resolution, the time of day, and the angle of the sun and the moon. In other words, just a lot of stuff. And that is raster. The reverse is true for the 7900 XT, being around 10% slower. We can argue all day, though, that the 4080 is considerably more expensive, although, of course, there are some price cuts that have happened in some regions already, like the United Kingdom, but that's not really for any reason other than just well currency and you know how you know exchange rates well change but um i do suspect that there will be of course additional driver optimizations from both amd and nvidia i still don't 100 percent know what the ray tracing performance is for the cards i've heard it's around the 3090 ish um on average so nvidia should have a nice advantage there um, it's going to be very interesting to see how these cards sell. I've heard that the initial shipments should be pretty good for stock, but one issue is that the Chinese New Year is kind of a thing. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this handles, um, no, sorry, how, how all of this ends up. I personally am actually kind of excited to see how AMD can shape, uh, shake up excuse me, the higher-end GPU market. I do feel that RDNA 3 is definitely a stepping stone not necessarily just in terms of like oh performance but just in terms of like where they're going from here i recently made a video discussing rdna4 some of the earlier rumors i'm probably going to do a deeper dive into this and amd strategy going forward because well there's a lot of stuff to be honest but let's move on to the rtx 4070 shall we Specifically, Kopitai 7 Kimi has already released an update concerning what we can expect from the card. So it's a 250 watt part, which I think is actually kind of a sweet spot um, for a lot of users. Basically speaking, 
You don't need a particularly powerful PSU. It can work as a really great drop-in solution for a lot of folks. Let's say for sake of discussion, you have an 8700K or a 3700X or even an older processor and you just want to spruce it up. This makes an excellent solution for that. It also is within, in my personal opinion anyway, you know, a good small form factor build. I mean, technically you could put a more powerful card in there, but yeah, your mileage will vary. Anyway, it's AD104 250A1 and contains 5888FP32, or CUDA cores if you prefer, 12 gigabytes of memory running at 21 Gbps, it's GDDR6X, and again, 36 megabytes of L2. So this is a significant cut from the 4070 Ti, which is rumoured... <laughs> Although it's been pretty much confirmed at this point from retailers to feature 70, 7680 CUDA cores. If I could speak, that would just be spiffy. And I believe the dies um, weigh in about the same anyway, because they're both 8104, but obviously um, one's the 400 and one's 250. So it's a significant cut from the RTX 4070 Ti, which sports 7680 CUDA cores. That's rumored, of course, it's not been officially confirmed by Nvidia, but basically speaking, retailers have confirmed it. The weird thing about this is, if the specifications from Kopitai are correct, and obviously I don't know if they are, I haven't had a chance to verify this, um, with anyone, so I'm going to try to do a little bit of digging, but it would mean that the bandwidth is identical between the TI and the 4070 vanilla. Now that's interesting, and I don't know what the overclockability is like on the 4070, but it's going to be very interesting to see how that ends up, because I wonder whether it's going to be bandwidth constrained at all. Um, it's going to be, again, curious to see how that turns out. But let's move on to NVIDIA, because NVIDIA are doing NVIDIA things. As most of you know, Lovelace has basically just arrived on store shelves. You know, if it was uh, a car, it would have just pulled out of the parking lot. And NVIDIA already teasing details of the RTX 50s or whatever they end up being. Now, I'm actually trying to find out some details about RTX 50 right now. But um, Ian Buck and this is from the data center perspective, admittedly, have basically said that we are making a new GP uh, architecture every two years. We've committed to a new CPU architecture every two years, and I'm very excited to launch Hopper this year. So it's going to be very exciting, and it's exciting that this Hopper transition is going to be turned a crank in 2023, and again in 2024, we'll keep coming back to you guys and telling you the next thing we see it. So it seems like this is going to be when a Blackwell launches RTX, um, I'm assuming Blackwell will also be the RTX 50 series. The rumor is, of course, that it's going to be monolithic for anything other than the higher end parts, and it does make sense that they have to go chiplet eventually, you know, because, well, there's just limits. I will be very interested to see what Nvidia does for its strategy for RTX 50. And now we're going to shift gears to Intel. So Intel have, of course, released Arc. And I think it's fair to say that the performance for the cards was not perhaps as much as some enthusiasts wanted, but it acted as a great stepping stone for Intel going forward. At the end of the day, it's not just about the hardware being right, quote unquote, but you also need the software as well. And that's been one area that Intel have really struggled with, the drivers. They actually sent me an A750. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet because I've been doing this moving thing. But it's perhaps good I haven't looked at it yet because they've recently released a big driver update, which essentially rectifies a lot of the DX9 performance issues. Um, I haven't looked super, super, super far into this, so please don't uh, you know, lambast me too much if I'm wrong. But I think it's essentially utilizing native DX9 on some stuff now, or at least they've changed how the, the translation layer works significantly, and it seems to be a lot more effective. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Intel does going forward, because of course, Intel quite early on did announce, well, the first generation, which is Alchemist, but then they also announced a couple of other architectures, including Battle Mage and Celestial. So obviously, uh, Battle Mage is the second generation, Celestial is the third generation, and so on. So it, there's been a couple of interesting comments from Raj Akadori. The first is with an interview with Gadgets360. 
He stated that, you know, the priority for them is to get out GPUs, which is going to be 200 to 225 watts, basically a single power connector. Now, technically speaking, the RTX 1490 is technically using a single power connector, I suppose, when you're plugging it into the GPU and obviously modern day GPUs and all that stuff, uh, sorry, PSUs and all that stuff. But um, I do feel that 225, 250 watts, maybe 300 is something that a lot of people tolerate. Do let me know in the comments below, by the way, what's your kind of tolerance range for GPUs? I have friends that literally do not care. If, for example, it was 5% extra performance, but the wattage went up like 20%, 30%, that's fine. I don't give a crap. And others are sticklers for energy efficiency. And obviously, you know, bigger GPUs, more powerful GPUs, they require more, well, energy. So that's pretty simple. Um, there are some things going, um, obviously, that are helping uh, reduce energy consumption, like, you know, lower, pro um, more efficient process nodes and chiplets and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, if you're producing a GPU which is more powerful, then, well, that's just what it is. So Intel does seem to be concerned a lot about affordability and also a lot about, um, basically, energy-efficient GPUs. Now, obviously, I'm putting words in Rajar's mouth here, but I have heard through the grapevine that their next generation products are not going to be, you know, the equivalent of the RTX 4090. I haven't got specific performance figures yet. I'm going to try to do more digging on this at some point, but I've basically been told they are kind of equivalent of NVIDIA's mid to high range. But the thing was, this was before Lovelace launched, so I don't know what that equates to. And obviously, these GPUs are not going to launch anytime soon, so it's a very iffy performance. It's a very iffy statement. Like, are, are we talking, for example, mid RTX 3070 or, f you know, are we talking 4070 or 5070? So it's gonna, it's not a very helpful comment, but I'm just mentioning it anyway. So it's gonna be very interesting. I think, I think Intel going forward are gonna be aiming for the mid range. And actually, to be honest with you guys, I'm absolutely okay with that. Um, I don't think Intel needs to release graphics cards that are the pinnacle, that are the highest end, because they they don't represent the highest figure. Like what was it? The GTX, is it the 1060? Just got knocked off of the Steam you know, the, the, the top GPU in the Steam charts. And I know there is a lot of discussion how accurate those charts are, but at the end of the day, it shows that not everyone, and this is putting it mildly, are buying cards like the 3080 or the 4090 or even the 7900 XT or whatever, right? So it's going to be interesting to see how Intel can crack that market. I'm absolutely okay with it. XESS looks like it's doing quite well at the moment. It's still quite early at the end of the day, um, it's like kind of like DLS, DLSS, if I can pronounce it, you know, one and FSR one, there's a lot of room for improvement and AMD, for example, look at FSR one versus FSR two. And even I mean, the latest is FSR 2.2, there's some phenomenal improvements there in the code. So it's going to be very interesting. But anyway, Raja Kodori also states in an interview, um, and this is actually part of the same interview, uh, that there's going to be no difference in the roadmap for Battle Mage and Celestial. They are still going to be releasing it, and there's going to be more big updates before Christmas in the drivers, which is great. GPU design cycles are 24 to 30 months long, as with CPUs for Intel. Um, and basically, he said, yeah, doing a new architecture is always very difficult. New architecture, three to four years, but after that, you have a baseline. Iterating on it is quite fast, so we're coming from nothing. We want to iterate as fast as possible, so we can catch up to the competition in every segment. And when you say more is coming in 2023, will there be more board partners, or do you mean it's a new generation? He said, yeah, we don't want to talk too much about Battle Mage, but Arc itself does have a lot of headroom. So whether this is a refresh Raja is referring to, or whether it's, you know, the next generation product, it's going to be quite interesting. At the end of the day, the data center is also extremely profitable. It's not just about consumer GPUs. Um, I think a third player in the market is extremely important because, you know, we could get a generation where NVIDIA suck or AMD suck, and then we're just left with the other one just basically rubbing their greedy mitts together. Or there could be shortages. We don't know if there's going to be another mining boom. We don't know if there's going to be some other major thing that happens right we just don't know so it's always good to have additional supply um i also want a lot of pressure in the in the mid-range anyway so with that said guys hopefully you have enjoyed the video if you did 
well, it's YouTube. You know what to do. And also, just a quick note, thanks very much to the people who did actually email me concerning my plea for the desk situation. Um, I actually had quite a few emails, funnily enough, so thanks to everyone who did email me. I'm going through a couple more emails at the moment. So again, thanks very much for your assistance. It's greatly appreciated. Stay safe, everyone. Bye for now.